turn that on. Is that on? Good. You got major headaches. Yeah, it's on now. Okay. And you got double vision, major headaches, and said, "I'm I'm sending you over here." So I went to emergency, and and they done a CAT scan. Didn't find anything. And so they put me in one of those MRIs, which I thought I was going to go crazy in. They're so enclosed. And uh, But anyway, I finally made it through that, and they got me out. They had to pull me out two or three times. And didn't have, uh, didn't find anything wrong there. So I knew then it wasn't um, life-threatening. So I felt better about that. And um, so they put me in the hospital, kept me there for four days and figured out that um, behind the, uh, the right eye, there's what you call cranial nerves, and it's the number six nerve. Um, it had, had a stroke, and it deadened that nerve for a period of time. They're, they're positive it's gonna come back. Um, but once we found it, we got things under control and uh, got some medication. And so I'm feeling much better now. My headaches are gone. And if I look to my right, I see double vision. If I look to my left, I'm, I'm fine. So if you see me looking more to my left while I'm reading like this rather than reading straight on, it's because I can read it good from this direction. If I have it sitting straight in front of me, one half of it is, uh, is double vision. So all that will go away. And uh, we uh, have the spirit of Joseph on us, <laughs> uh, double. So you have to turn left to get your right vision. Yes, to turn left to get my right vision. Hi, Sister Pam. Good to see you. You meet Alan. Make sure you tease him when he comes in. <laughs> I came all the way from Columbus. That's good to you here, boy. <laughs> so we um, we have uh, we've been talking on uh, several different things, but at the end of um, the last session we had, I had. Um, I had written this down, and I didn't read it, and I keep hearing some, oh, there's that one. There he is. I had written this down, and it says, every one of us has a shadow government within our darkness. So, in order to have a shadow, there has to be some darkness. So, every one of us have a shadow government, and I'll explain that within our darkness, within our unknown side, and it is always trying to set things up according to prophecy. You know, you hear prophecy and you say, oh, that's, you know, like, like Israel did. Um, Israel had prophecies of the Messiah, and they tried to set things up according to the prophecy, the prophecy that said, a child is born, a son is given, the government should be upon his shoulders and so forth, and they tried to set up a shadow government on that and say, well, here's how it's going to happen. It's going to come through uh, Caiaphas, it's going to come down through the main denomination, it uh, can't be John the Baptist for the forerunner, it has to be somebody with some kind of uh, psychological degree, and uh, th they had it all set up, a shadow government trying to take a prophecy and make it something when it's not here. Um, and remember, when, when prophets look down through time and they caught into that fourth dimension and they begin to look down through time and they seen things, it uh, wasn't necessarily what they wrote down. Uh, Isaiah wrote down that he saw Israel going home on wings of eagles, but we all know it was airplanes that he was looking at in the sky. That's what they went home on. Um, Nahum wrote down, he said he seen the chariots on the runways jostling one against another with, uh, with burning lamps and, and uh, of course we know what he seen was interstate highways 
and cars running down the highway with burning lamps on them and running into one another and uh, having wrecks and everything else jostling against one another. So there's all kinds of things through the scripture that prophets seen. They wrote them down by their knowledge, just like Brother Branham. He said there'll come a car one day and he said this car is uh, going to be egg-shaped and people are going to be sitting in it playing games like checkers. Well, all of the never Branhams, you know, you got never Trumpers, all the never Branhams, they're all saying, well, <laughs> we know that nobody's going to be sitting in a car today playing checkers. They're going to have their they're going to have their cell phones, and they're going to have their games, and they're going to be playing Xbox, and they're going to be doing this and that. No, they're not going to be sitting there playing checkers. He's a false prophet. Well, he wrote it. He said it the way he saw it. He didn't know what the game was, but he said it the best he knew how. He knew that checkers was a game, so they're going to be sitting playing games like checkers and things. Um, so when prophets look down through time, they see these things it um, it it actually is not how they wrote it down necessarily so keep that in mind now I'll read the rest of it. every one of us <laughs> you going to get her Every one of us has a shadow government within our darkness, within our own unknown side. And it is always trying to set things up according to a prophecy. How we want to interpret the unknown before it actually comes into view. Um, our, uh, let me give you a, a decent example. I went out to the Grand Canyon and it was nighttime and it was pitch dark everywhere so I go through the gate um, they hadn't closed the gate yet well when I got up in there it got nighttime and I didn't come back out so I decided I was going to stay up in there for a long time and I took my car and I parked it and it's so so dark it was unbelievable and I was sitting there and the and I didn't realize it's so dark you don't you, you don't you don't see what's around you mm -hmm. You imagine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you set up a shadow government, and then all of a sudden the sun started coming up, and I, I'd stayed in there, and the sun starts rising that morning, and it was just aghast. All, all, it was just awesome. It was so beautiful, all the things that were around me. But I never imagined any of that being around. I was like, man, I could have got myself killed up here. I didn't know there was drop-offs 15 feet from me. I didn't know there was this. I didn't know there was that. But I set up a shadow government around me to try to imagine what it was like. And we do that. How we want to interpret the unknown and make it come into view. When the word makes itself flesh, it doesn't always look like what we imagine in our shadow government. We have to recast and acclimate to the flesh word when the logic word isn't what we thought. I hope you get that. We have to recast when the flesh word gets here, unless you want to just be miserable all your life with shadow governments, you have to recast your thinking and your government and your principles and everything about you when the flesh when the when the flesh gets here that is the word for the day otherwise you're never going to have the thought right you're never going to be standing in the proper place you're never going to understand the logic of the word for your day so you have to recast it you have to take it out of being four-footed animals and put it in a man called Jesus. You have to take it out of a man called Jesus and put it in you. You have to take it out and you just go on and on and on. Take it out of a church agent, put it in a test, a third testament. Take it out of that, put it in love divine. Take it constantly moving the shadow governments that we set up for the time being before reality sets in. That's what I want to talk on for just a little while.
and I am going to uh, take a drink of something here and I have this patch I'm not going to put it on yet but if, if either one of you have anything you want to say about that part of it while I'm doing a couple of things here well the shadow of government doesn't come from the human spirit though, right I mean we're if you look back it's already there so the human spirit just takes that and, and uses it how it does but I would say my thinking would be that the shadow government actually is a part of and comes out of the theophany. Absolutely. Every shadow government that you set up came out of your theophany. You may set up several in your life. You may set up a government of how you think a family ought to be ran. You may set up a government of how you think mom and dad sh uh, should be treating you. How you think, just on and on and on, how you think you should have this job. Um, shadow governments like Matt. And then it doesn't work out. Now you either have to, what they say, pull your bootstraps up, bring your, bring your thoughts of government that you really wanted in your life and pull them in and start over. And realize you were playing with a wish, a prophecy, an imagination. You weren't resting in a reality. And the theophany you can find in the message of your prophet where that the theophany is a shadow. And that's what it is. It's a shadow of good things to come. So I want to talk on governments, spiritual and natural. Is there anything you want to say before? I no, I think go ahead. Okay. So would you would you say, and just so I know what direction we're starting out in, would you say that religion came out of the shadow government sure. of those who wanted to say, hey, we want it to be this way, so we have to devise yes. something to control humanity to do it that way. And out of it, you get religion. And yes. out of that, you get politics. So it all comes yeah. out of the shadow government. All of that. Religion, politics, um, right on down the line. Everything comes out of that theophany. When a religion is set up, it is sincere. I guarantee you Brigham Young was sincere in what he did. Joseph Smith was sincere in what he did. John Smith, John Wesley, William Branham, right on down the line, sincere men in what they did. That shadow government came from their theophany, trying to, the, a, a theophany that said, this is the way I think it should work. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, and the reality is not here, and something, some <coughs> more word is acclimating to move into the flesh for the day, if you hang on to that, you got real problems. You've got to let go of that. So we see this, Isaiah 9 and 2, it says, The people that walked in great darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death Upon them hath the light shined. Now if you read Isaiah 9 and 1, I'm not going to go back there and read all that chapter. Isaiah 9 and 1 talks about Zebulun and Naphtali, which were Capricorn, the land of Capricorn. And it's saying that these people, and then Matthew comes along and uses that very scripture when Jesus goes into Nephtali and begins to do healing and signs and wonders, he said, the people who sat in great darkness, the people who sat in Capricorn, have now seen a great light. You want to wear, know where the most light's going to shine? I'm looking forward to it. Capricorn. It's going to shine great. The earth is going to light up during the Capricorn age. It's another 2,000 years, but we're not going anywhere. You know, we're in eternity. All right. And, uh, you know, I may slip out of this piece of flesh, and I may slip into another one, uh, whatever it might be, but when the Capricorn age begins to come into the earth, 
this is going to happen. A great light is going to strike the earth. Now he goes on to say, Isaiah 9 and 6. If you don't know what Capricorn is, it's an earth sign. Capricorn is a sign that brings, Aquarius brings the Lord back from, I guess the best way to put it is back from outer space, talking about spiritually speaking. Aquarius brings the Lord into view. He brings it under Pegasus. He brings it in under uh, the great swan. He brings it in under, um, you know, Pegasus knocks the, the urn over and sets uh, Andromeda free, which was the church ages. I could just go on and on and on with that. But anyway, Capricorn is the age wherein all of those things that, that all of they were set free from is no longer reigning in the earth. And they're set free from all of these shadow governments and everything else. And real true reality of Christ, all of us being Christ, the all in all, that's what the Capricorn age is. It is the all in all manifesting itself completely. So Isaiah goes on, if you jump down four verses, and he talks about blood, and he talks about spirit, and he talks about all kinds of things that happen after these people see great light, you can go back and read that ninth chapter. And then he says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. You say, when's this going to be, Brother Parnell? You say, well, it was in Jesus' day. Well, they took that man and they crucified him, and he certainly didn't take over the earth in a manner of the government being upon his shoulder. It just didn't happen. So this prophecy is all about the people in Capricorn, in Nephtali. Isaiah, the ninth chapter, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. So there is coming that age in Capricorn when all these things, if you look at it, it's all the different shadow governments removed mm -hmm. and real true government put into the earth upon his shoulder the ones in that Nephtalian age they will they will have the government on their shoulders they will be wonderful they will be counselors they will be the prince of peace the everlasting father they'll be uh, the mighty God they'll be all of these things that will be in the earth and of the increase of that day of that government there shall be no end that government will move into the earth at the end of this zodiacal cycle that we are in the Capricorn age is the last age the 12th age Aquarian is the 11th we're in it right now when we step into that 12th age there will have been such changes in Aquarius until that government is ready to be set up in reality right here now Paul goes on to say that was Isaiah Hebrews 10 in verse 1 for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of those things listen to what it says it's a shadow the law is a shadow of good things to come not the very image of those things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect for then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins now which that alone tells me people really don't believe their sins are gone because they hold a consciousness of sin right now Jesus Christ saved me, made me whole. He gave me my salvation. He, he, he uh, forgave me of my sins, but I'm a sinner. I still got sin. I still got problems. I still got issues. I still, my consciousness condemns me. You've never accepted Jesus Christ. 
and the work that he's done. That's the whole issue, and that's what Paul is saying here, is if you hold on to these sins that bothered you yearly until you had to kill some animal in order to get some peace for a while and, and cook some cakes and take it to the priest so they can eat it and everything else, if it bothers you that bad, you still got a problem. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ purged that worshiper of the consciousness of sin. It's done. So we see this. Now, every one of us has a shadow government. This is where I read it first. We all have a shadow government in us that will pull your consciousness to condemnation and sin if you let it. Because the shadow government never holds the whole truth the complete satisfaction everything that it should hold some of it is missing yes. it's just missing you miss it through the the prophecies you miss it through your imagination you miss it through so many different ways that when something begins to happen and it doesn't coordinate just right the shadow the shadow government if you don't coordinate up to it it'll condemn you mm -hmm. That's what the law does. The law was to condemn you, and the law was a shadow of good things to come. <coughs> Hebrews 6 and 1, I believe it is, Paul makes a statement. He says that we are to leave the principles and the teachings of all these simplistic things, and we're supposed to go on into perfection. Drop all these shadow governments, drop all these things that we think are that uh, that are causing us problems and all this consciousness of sin and everything we're supposed to wipe it out but we have a hard time doing it Jesus was there in his day and he was the reality of the government for their day and then look at what they had <coughs> for shadow governments they were all set up they had uh, Israel the high priests all of them they were shadow government Caiaphas they had the Sanhedrin council they had the Pharisees they had the Sadducees they had the lawyers they had all of those where do you think all those came from they pulled out of the law of Moses a section and said, this is our shadow government. They didn't call it a shadow government. They thought it was reality. Mm -hmm. They pulled it out and made it their government. And then when the reality come, and you were supposed to remove the shadow and take the good thing, they couldn't step away from the shadow. They couldn't step away from all that the Pharisees had set up all that you eat, all that you drink, the way you act, the way you dress, the way you, all of these, they couldn't move those out of their life. And so they began to condemn people, people on the, in the poor sections, people on the other side of the tracks, people who were wine bibbers and whoremongers and, and whores and everything. And they begin to condemn everybody and say, we are the only ones that are elite and we are living according to this great government that we have set up and then here comes a man John the Baptist and he sets it up in a way to where he doesn't he doesn't drink with any of them he doesn't eat with any of them he doesn't preach their doctrines he doesn't go by their denomination he stays in the wilderness he comes out and he begins to preach I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness come and prepare to come and prepare the way for the Messiah and he's preaching his message to the people and he's bringing his message out and all of them are saying who is this guy who's this they already had their shadow government set up and they said he doesn't mix with the people he doesn't he doesn't do this he's not he's not a part of the denomination and then here comes Jesus who grew up for 30 years in the synagogue just go read Luke 4. It says that when Jesus went in on, in Luke the 4th chapter, they brought to him the, the book of Isaiah as was their custom. 
and I don't know if you've read it or not, if you go back in the history, but there's only like four, four people in the entire synagogue of any city that could receive anything that had to do with reading to the people, and that was priests and, and uh, elders and scribes and one other one. And so Jesus was something with them, or they'd have never delivered the book to him. And he goes up and sits down in front of them in all of their establishment and everything that they are, and he begins to read that I am Isaiah 61. I am the Messiah. I'm the one that's, uh, that's bringing the men and the brokenhearted, doing all these things. And then he goes out and he begins to dwell with women in Bethlehem, Mary and Martha. He begins to, he begins to take up with prostitutes. And he begins to take up with, with all of these different things, wine bibbers. And, and then all of them said, well, John the Baptist came saying, don't mix with any of them. And then Jesus comes saying, mix with them all. What do we do here? Their shadow government wouldn't let them move with the flow of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it never will. Mm -hmm. If you're setting right. a government up on things that you think it ought to be without Christ moving in your life in such a way that it brings the flow of the day for your day and age and all you're doing is setting up a government of laws and rituals and regulations you're in trouble it's not going to work for you so we see this there was a there was a uh, a prophecy we talked about the last couple weeks this is another prophecy and it was now that i'm we're talking on these things i seen right away that it was shaking down those shadow governments and this was a, a brother back in the 1990s and he wrote me and he said brother Parnell this is a prophecy I was praying and this prophecy came to me about you and he sent it to me and it said hold firm in the battle my brother heaven and earth is bearing witness to your obedience great reward in his kingdom lies just before you through the though the trial of the hour is pressing hard the cries of the faithful servant shake both the heavens and the earth my anointing will not leave you for you have been called to this hour for my glory those who bless you will be blessed and those who withstand you, my word, though in a vessel of clay, they are judged already. Saith who has, who has set the pattern and will preserve it to the consummation. So the pattern was a ministry that would come that would shake both heaven and earth, shake down everything, and anything that would decide that it didn't want to be a part of that was going to fall into the consummation or come to an end it wouldn't be blessed and a lot of people they say to themselves well yeah but brother Parnell that was probably one of your good friends that was one of the men that fought hardest against me for the last 15 years of my life Charlie Clyde and I love him with everything and I'm sure we're on better terms now than we were back then. Um, he's, he's in a better place. I'm not trying to down Brother Charlie at all. But I'm just saying that so you know that I, I didn't just pick some prophecy somewhere and say, ooh, yeah, so and so Alan gave him that. Or, or, or somebody, you know, no, that was from a brother who was hard on my trail for years and years and years. <laughs> a good man so we see this government was to be broken down look at us from around the year 2004 until now just look at us look at what's going on Hand some of those napkins right there. my nose is running a little bit I wanted to read some of this. 
I wrote this down after he sent me the prophecy. And I, what I wrote down, I said, the consummation is here. I will fight no more forever. I don't have to worry about ending anything. Everything will end on its own. I don't have to fight anything. I don't have to fuss about anything. I don't have to argue about any doctrine. The consummation is here. And when the spirit ends something, it'll die on its own. Yeah. You don't have to try to poison it. You don't have to try to tear it down. It'll die on its own. So I wrote that down back then. And in the year 2003, shortly thereafter, there was a prophecy that came forth. And it was from a sister um, who certainly is a good sister but sees things a whole lot different than I do. Sister Dawn Brinkman. So I'm not, I'm not picking prophets. No, people. you're not. I'm not picking people that love me. <laughs> they love me, but I'm not picking people that, that are yes men and women. <laughs> they're, they're very strong on my trail. Word of the Lord, it said, O mighty man of valor, you have served me all so well. You stood and preached the truth, battling so much hell. You hold my banner high and get yourself out of the way. And anything you need, dear son, it's yours today, I say. You know I don't take these prophecies for myself. I'm reading about every one of us. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us. Hold firm in the battle. The consummation is here. Don't try to end a bunch of stuff on your own. It'll die. We know where the spirit is flowing. Let it move. If you get any questions, just let me know. Just let it move. And you, every one of us, I've always said, like Adam, I'm a representative. I'm a representative of a people here in the earth who are moving in the flow of the spirit. And this is talking about Sister Connie, Brother Daniel, Sister Pam, Sister Patty, Brother Allen, every one of us. It's talking about every single one, every one of you that's on there, every one of us throughout the earth today that are moving in this spirit in such a manner. It's speaking of you. You are people of valor. You served oh so well. You stood, you brought forth the truth, battling so much hell. You hold my banner high and you get yourself out of the way. Sometimes that's very hard to do. And that, what I'm speaking about here is shadow governments. It's so hard to move those things out of the way. It's so hard to not judge someone for the thing they said, did, or acted, or, or, or set up themselves in a shadow government way. And now they're trying to get out of that thing. They set it up in such a way and they're saying... No, I, I'm, I'm sorry, that's not what it was. And everybody comes after and says, but you said this. i got to quote what you said this. And you said that, but, but I'm not there anymore. I can tell you that. You'll find quotes. When I was all the way back in the Pentecostal church after William Branham died and I was preaching at 13 years old, you will find quotes of mine that are so far off it's pathetic. But I moved out of that shadow government. You'll find them when I come into the message. You'll find them when I came, came into the Third Testament. And you'll even find some where I was in love divine and made statements that I have now changed them because I'm not going to set up a shadow government. I look. I see something coming. I say what I think it is. And then when it gets here, I will change to whatever it is. Mm -hmm. That's what makes the huge difference. You stick with the light. That's right. You just keep moving with the light. <clears throat> Anything you need, dear son, any one of you, it's yours today, I say. Here's our commission. Shadow governments have been moved aside. We've moved aside all of the old 
holiness ways. I don't tell you not to dress holy. I don't tell you what you can and can't wear. I don't tell you what is holy. Surely to goodness we all have enough of the Spirit in us now to know how to act and walk and dress and know when something kind of says, you know, this ain't just right. Mm -hmm. And you make your changes, whatever that might be in. I have things in me every day that says, maybe this is not just right. It doesn't condemn me. Like one person said, he said, uh, Saul rejected um, um, what the Lord was doing in his day. And therefore, he had to, he had to face the consequences. And I wrote it. I said, no, no, no. Saul, Saul believed in Samuel all the way through. He didn't reject what the Lord sent. Saul believed that he was a king over Israel. He didn't reject what the Lord sent. Saul tried to be a king and a warrior for the people. He did not reject. He did not do any of those things. But Saul chose a different path than what he could have walked in. And when he chose that path, there were things on that path that put him in a harder way of life. But in the end, he was right there with Samuel, talking to Samuel, and went home to be with Samuel at the end of the day. Saul didn't reject anything. And it wasn't like the Lord cursed him. It was his choices that set up a different way. That's right. That the whole concept of all that cursing and... And this is wrong, and it's it's just it's another day. This is a whole nother day. So we see this now. A commission that we had. I'm going to go through some of these. I wanted to bring these up to show you how the shadow government. You're going to have to move it out of the way if you want to be a part of this commission. Every one of you on here this morning. Every one of you sitting here, every one of you that's on the live broadcast, every one of you that will listen to this CD or go to the website and listen to it day after day as you go, this is your commission. It's not mine. It's ours. Mm -hmm. This is your commission. Tell the people that their sins and iniquities are remembered no more. That came in 2002 when William Branham came in a visitation and talked with me. And that's one of the things he said. He said, go and tell the people that their iniquities are remembered no more and their sins are remembered no more. And everybody just continues to try to push the iniquity and the sin upon people. Mm -hmm. You're not completely redeemed yet. I've had them tell me, uh, we're not fully redeemed. What? Jesus didn't finish his work of redemption? What was he screaming about on Calvary when he said it's finished? It, his blood is not good enough? I listen to these things and I think if people would just stop a second and think about what they're saying, they, they would know how silly they sound. It's our commission to tell the people Go out there and do this if you want to help people. If you want people to pay attention to you, stop telling them what they're doing wrong. Stop telling them what they're doing right and just tell them you're free of your sin and your iniquity. It's all wiped away. Enjoy your life and forget about the scales of right and wrong. Forget about the scales of judgment. Go out and tell the people that your iniquities are remembered no more. You say, well, how come all this is still here then? What's it all doing here? What, why, is, why all these governments? Why politics? Why this? Why that? Why religion? Why is the Pope up here? Why, why, you know, why is all these governments going on? Why is all these wars happening? If our sins and iniquities are remembered no more. Well, let me take you back. That's right. Mm -hmm. Contrast. Let me take you back to Isaiah, the 40th chapter, where John the Baptist began to scream out. They said, Who are you? He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare you the way of the Lord. And John the Baptist went on to say, Your sins and iniquities are remembered no more. Go back there and read it for yourself. 
John the Baptist declared to Israel their sins and iniquities were remembered no more. And there they sat under Pontius Pilate and the Roman conquerors dying left and right on crosses, being beaten in slavery. There they set uh, Pontius Pilate over top of them. Then there they sat in all their shadow governments of high priests and Caiaphas and Sadducees and lawyers and Pharisees and Sanhedrin councils and everything else. There they sat right in the middle of them, all of us still right there, looking it right in the face, killing them, slaughtering them, doing everything to them, and John the Baptist saying, your sins and iniquities are remembered no more. How in the world could he declare himself to be such a scripture? Because he was not looking at the shadow government. He was looking at the fact that a real true government had moved on the scene and it was setting itself up and there was a way out of all of that. There's a way out of all of it now. I'm not worried about politics. I'm not worried about religion. It's all shadow governments. I'm not worried about any of it. I watch it because I'm able to see patterns on what's going on in, in us by watching that and see patterns of what's going on in us, in them, and know many things that the Holy Spirit is doing. So we see this. He went on to say, your commission is to transition the people from the second coming into the third coming of Christ. That is a complete, a complete governmental change. This is still the third coming of Christ, whether you know it or not. We're not in the third testament, but the coming of Christ, this is the third one. This is, he came first to redeem us. He came second to carry us away, the church ages. And he came third to set himself up in the earth. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing now in this third coming is we're setting up the kingdom in the earth. That's what this is all about. The kingdom is being set up in the earth. The kingdom came on the day of Pentecost. We all know that. And then it came down through seven church ages of mediation and intercession and propitiation and everything else and messengers and and all kinds of judgment and laws until we come down to the end. And then there was to come a ministry that said your your sins and your iniquities are no more and it moves you over and transitions you out of the second coming. The second coming is ended. It happened on the day of Pentecost and it ended here in this age after the Laodicean church age and we're sitting right in the middle of the third coming where the Christ is setting himself up in the earth and it's your commission every one of you it's not Don Parnell's commission it's not a Tory's commission it's your commission to transition these people out of the second coming into the third coming Listen to me. In the second coming, in the first coming, there was God and gods. In the second coming, there was God over all. And in the third coming, there's no God. I get so tired of seeing people that are, they'll say they're in the third coming and they're constantly writing about God's doing this for me and God's doing that for me. I'm thinking, are you ever going to come out from under the veil of the second coming? The second coming is finished and we've moved into a fellowship setting up a kingdom in the earth and it's fellowship one with another. Mm -hmm. Sister Pam and I are having fellowship one with another and that's God doing something if you want to call something God. I don't even call it that because I'm not going to worship Sister Pam. Mm -hmm. And if she tried to worship me, I would be all over and tell her she shouldn't do that. She wouldn't do that. It's not in her to do it. So we're away from all of this God syndrome. And we need to stop going out here. We've got four forums that we use, four groups that we use. There's over 40,000 people total between all of those forums. And we're all saying we're in the third coming, and yet I see many, many, many of you constantly carrying on about God. <laughs> and I just think, have we not... Have we not transitioned out from under the veil? It's your position to transition out from under that veil. And it's your position to transition the people out from under that veil. And get them away from the concept of having a God. 
worshiping something, having something superior to you, being inferior, the little guy. Like some of them say, oh, he's the big G, I'm the little G. <laughs> Nonsense. I'm not a big G or a little G. I am Christ himself living in earth and all of us are fellowshipping one with another and we are the Christ. And the big G and little G is gone. That's the third coming of Christ. The G is gone. <laughs> the G stands for gone. Yeah, gone. <laughs> Some of you may have seen where I wrote, wrote a little bit on mm -hmm. Facebook about it. Yeah, that's good. When I got out of the, the hospital and came home, I was just going through, you know, comment after comment after, God this, God this, God that, and I'm thinking, <laughs> when are we going to move to the fact that we're fellowshipping one with another so we see these things going on let's transition the people from the second coming of godhood into the third coming of companionship and love and fellowship let's do that the third coming is us. Sure <laughs> My commission. I'm, I'm telling you things the angel of the Lord said directly to me. And I'm telling you that if you are a part of this ministry, he said it to you. Mm -hmm. Every last one of you. It's not Don Parnell's place to go out here and try to correct all these things out here in the world that have to do with pulling us out from under these old veils. It's your place whether you're in Zimbabwe or Ghana or Kenya or Rwanda or Cameroon or Gabon or Philippines or Japan or South Korea, Thailand. We have people in all those places, Greenland, Iceland, Canada, South America. I could just keep naming the places. It's your place, people, to transition these people out from under this old veil. If you don't do it, then they just have a life like Saul. They have a life that's hard to live by and there will come an age where somebody will do it. But don't you want to be the ones? Mm -hmm. Don't you want to have that under your belt to be able to go through eternity saying, I was a pioneer. I was one who stepped out there when there wasn't even a path and I took a machete and I cut a path and I made a pass so others could ride their wagons through it and get where they needed to be and settle down in a good land. Don't you want to be one of those? Or you just want to come later? <laughs> My commission is to move the people through thick veils that they could not step through by themselves. There's a lot of thick veils out here. I'll tell you, four of them. Jesus Christ, Paul, William Branham, Don Parnell. Four very thick veils that we have to move ourselves through, get past them. I see people out here, and like I said, I'm, I'm going to level the playing field this year. It's going to get a little rough once in a while. I see people out here that say, Prophet Don Parnell, Prophet Atori, Prophet this, Prophet that. What's the matter with you? Move beyond Don Parnell. Move beyond Atori. Love me as a brother. Say anything you want, but when you're propagating me, and pushing me and going on to other forms and other sites and saying you have to believe a Tory Alo Yansa. If you don't believe his message, you're not in the message of the hour. Making all those statements is not helping you and it's not helping me. Right. You go out there, stop this nonsense about prophets and, and everything else and serve one another with all of your hearts. Serve one another with all of your hearts. And when Sister Pam becomes as important to you as Don Parnell does, then I'll know that you love the Lord Jesus. Yes. When Alan Copeland, when Aubrey Copeland, when, when Louis Villamore, 
when I sell a strata, when, when whoever it might be becomes as important to you as a Tory and all of these prophetic things, when they become as important to you and you love your family and you live with your family, you walk with your family and you help your congregation and you move people through these thick veils that couldn't get through them on their own, constantly oh Jesus do this for me constantly oh Paul Paul said Paul said Paul said all the time William Bram's quote if it's not in William Bram's quote or Don Pond a Tory said and then bang 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 all through the internet a Tory a Tory a Tory Don Pond what are you doing you're just lifting up those veils mm -hmm. that that we have died to tear down yeah. Jesus died to rip down the veils in that temple and the priests and the Pharisees went and, and put them back up and claimed that the Holy Spirit was still behind those veils. And all those people believed them for years to come until 70 AD when the Lord finally said, okay, if that generation don't want to tear the veils down, I'll tear them down. And he sent in the Romans and slaughtered them all and tore the temple down till there wasn't one stone left upon another and proved to them there wasn't no Holy Spirit behind those veils any longer. Shadow governments, you better tear them down. You are the ones. It's your commission to help the people through these thick veils. When you hear somebody talking about prophet this and prophet that, the prophet said this, we got to do this, take the time, if not openly, at least personally, wherever you live at, talk to them and say, you know, we moved beyond that. We moved beyond all that and we're at a point to where Don's a good man and Tori's a great man and so is William Branham, but we have things for ourselves. Let's talk about what's ours today and we can bring them in just like we'll bring anybody else in and talk about what they said, but they're no more important than we are. This is a level playing field this year. I kept having health problems where I'd have brought these things up around the turn of the year. But I kept having problems and I kept having problems and, I, and sometimes, you know, I've caught myself holding things back and the Holy Spirit says, yeah. I'll give you. A, I'll give you a go to it. You finally get tired of it, and uh, and you finally speak up and bring it out. So I don't need any of these things. I'm I'm one out of this cycle. <laughs> I want out of this cycle of 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 strokes and 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 cranial this and 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 tumors and I, I want out of this cycle and I'm done and I'm 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 moving forward. <laughs> I'm moving forward. It's our place. It's our commission to transition them to the third coming, to tell them their sins and iniquities are gone, and to move the people through these thick veils, through these men, through these shadow governments, through these names, through all these things, and get us to the point to where we understand that all the body is important. Every single piece of the body is absolutely important. And we can move through these veils together and get on the other side of them. Tearing down the shadow government. It's our commission. Is to arrange the grounds for the new message of the generation after the second coming. What are the grounds? You remember the 2004 visitation when I was walking on the grounds of William Branham mm -hmm. and he told me it's your pen now and he handed yeah. it to me yeah. and he said take that pen and touch the earth what was he telling me stop following after me and rearrange the grounds mm -hmm. and I took that pen and I brought it down in the vision him right there I brought that pen down and when it touched the earth, before I did that, he told me, he said, take that pen, Brother Parnell, he said, point it at that tree over there. And it was a cedar tree. I, I can remember the vision plain as anything. And he said, I want you to move that tree from, from right there over to here. 
and he pointed at a place. And I took the pen and I moved it right down, aimed it at the tree, and I didn't know what was going to happen, but I knew something was. Mm -hmm. So I moved it very slowly. And the tree ripped right up out of the ground, moved right over, and sat down exactly where I pointed it to put it. He said, do you see that that pen you have has a lot of power? I said, yeah, I do see that. He said, now, take this one and move it. Well, I was kind of confident in what was going to happen. And you know, as I moved that tree the first time, the scenery was changing mm -hmm. everywhere. It was changing everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I took it and I'd done this. And I moved it real fast. And the scenery just went shh. Mm -hmm. And I thought, it doesn't matter how fast or how slow we go. Mm -hmm. We're in eternity right now. Mm -hmm. And things are going to happen exactly the way that they're supposed to happen and we have this power within us rearrange the grounds that was in March of 2004 11 years later in March of 2015 here I am 11 years later and you know what Don Parnell's doing I get rebuked sometimes don't think I don't <laughs> Don Parnell is still, William Branham said this, this is a quote, this is a quote, Paul said this, and this strong quotes left and right, you, if you've got to believe this, you've got to believe that, William Branham backs up here, and William Branham said this, and William Branham said that. And there I was at home one evening, and the whole front area of where I was at, I lived on about five or six acres in, the whole front area just covered in fire all at once. And there came four angels. And I know who they were. It was Jesus. It was Paul. It was William Branham. And it was me. And they began to rebuke me left and right. Telling me you are, you are at the point of death. You are in the valley of decision. And you have better move out of this valley. Stop using my quotes for your generation. I had a message for my generation. And you've got one for yours. Go out there and preach and bring and minister your message to the people. And bring the people further along. After 11 years, I knew I was going to have to do something that I was told plain as anything, you're going to die in this valley. So I made my move. I made my move and I began to slow way down on the quotes of Paul and William Branham and Jesus said this and, Jesus, and I began to bring in and when I began to bring in what was going on in our day, you remember the vision, the pen uh, I was talking about in 2004 March? When I brought that pen down, it split the heavens wide open and it was filling up the heavens with brand new words, words that we knew nothing about. That's what started happening to me in 2015, March, when I realized I needed to lay everything else down and open up a new canvas, open up a new day and bring a word. And when I started doing that, it brought everything, it rearranged the grounds. Now, okay, I was the first, if you want to call it that. But a field has more than first fruits in it. Mm -hmm. There has to come others. And you are those others now. And it's your commission. It's your day and it's your hour for you to do exactly what you're supposed to do and rearrange the grounds and get the people out from under the second coming, get them out from under their condemnation and their sin, get them out from under all these thick veils that they've been walking in. Even in love divine, we have allowed them, we have allowed people to walk on through thick veils and not do anything to help them through. And let them go right on talking and let them go right on saying things just like they're under the second coming. Are you enjoying leveling the playing field? <laughs> it's tough. Then it's going to get tougher. Our commission. 
is to take them to the other side of Mount Sunset and bring them to Mount Sunrise. You remember in 2015, I went to, I went to Philippines. And I went to Legaspi, the way the Holy Spirit told me to do. And I talked about Mount My Own. And I said, I'm going to change that name to Mount Sunrise. And I changed that name to Mount Sunrise. And then it began to explode. And I went back and it was, it was actually, I seen fire coming out of it and everything. And the next trip back. And it began to explode. And I said, what we have done is we have stopped at Mount Sunset. Nobody wanted to go on the other side of the mountain and find the sunrise. And the lady, Sister McCleary, said in 1977, while everyone else is looking at the end, you will see the beginning. When everyone else is looking at the sunset, you will see the sunrise. You're not of the establishment of the message. We remove the shadow government. We remove the end time. We remove the governments of the end time. We removed all of those things out of our lives. And it's our place to take the people over to Mount Sunrise. Stop talking to them. You know, I had a man in my, in my church <laughs> when I was down in, in, at, at the other church. And he just kept talking about this uh, Planet X. I, I forget what they call it. Nibiru or whatever it was. Planet X is going to explode. The whole world is going to explode. It's going to destroy this. It's going to destroy that. And I would get up and I would say, we're on the other side of Mount Sunset. We're moving into Mount Sunrise. We got a new day. The end is over. We came through Noah's Ark. We come out on the other side. We got a brand new day, a brand new message. The prophet said it's the rising of the sun. And I just kept preaching my message, preaching my message. And his people said, do you understand what he's preaching? Do you hear what he's saying? Even his own children were saying to me, he's scaring us to death. Do you hear what he's saying? He's not saying what you're saying. I said, I know that. But I said that I would never tell a man what to speak. I will never tell a man what to say or what to do. The Holy Spirit's going to have to deal with that man. Not, I'm not going to mess with him. And I let him go right on. Of course, you see where he's at today. You see where they're all at today. Very, very far from where the flow of the Spirit is taking place. Love them, love them to pieces. But they have chosen a path like Saul. Not rejected, not horrible, none of those things. But they've chosen a path that makes it much harder for the things they're doing. And in the end, they'll be standing right with Samuel. They'll be standing right with us. But that's okay. We have this going on. Move the people to Mount Sunrise. Get them away. Other ministers that stood and talked about contrast showed us on a television how that if you turn the light on all the way, you can't see anything. You bring the contrast up. Showed us how if you turn the contrast way down, it goes dark. And he said, you got to have it in the middle. you got to have both darkness and light. When you set it in the middle, you get the picture. Preached a beautiful message on contrast and said, that's what's going on now. We've moved into the unknown and we're bringing the unknown and bringing everything to light and it's beyond the day that, that they were in in William Branham's day and it's beyond a, and preached a beautiful message on it and then turn around and today you'll listen to them waiting on a rapture. <laughs> because they wouldn't move beyond Mount Sunset. All they could do is look at Mount Sunset. Let's level the playing field. We're beyond Mount Sunset. We're on the other side of the end of the world. The world is not going to end anymore. Shadow governments are going to go away. But this world is ours. It's the third kingdom or it's the third coming. And he is setting himself up in the earth right now. And he will take it over. I don't know if it's a thousand years from now or ten thousand years from now. It doesn't matter to me. But his kingdom is in the earth now and he's taking it over through us, the third people. Move them to Mount Sunrise. It's your commission. It's up to you. You want to sit around and talk about God and sin and
condemnation. What do you want to talk about? Or do you want to move on? You talk about the end of the world? The whole place is going to blow up? <laughs> it's, it's, it's sad. A prophet came to open a new day to us. And a ministry came here to wake us up to that new day and to tell us of all the things that went on in the church and how that that's all finished and it's time to move on. To tell us that the Bible is closed up, finished, and put it aside. Arrange the grounds. Take them to Mount Sunrise. When you hear people talking about the end time, Talk to them about the end time already happened. They had a real good view of the end time, but they're kind of lagging behind and they can't get through that thick veil because the end is over. And a new day has begun. Those who are able to see beyond the shadows and lies of their culture will never be understood, let alone believed by the masses. That was Plato. I wrote a comment about it. Those who are able to see beyond the shadows and lies of their culture, and that's what mm -hmm. sets up all these governments. You set up governments in you, in your own personal life, that you think you ought to be, and then when you can't be it, or when you make a mistake or when you move into such a part in your life that you no way you can be what you thought you were going to be you can't let go of the shadow government you condemn yourself every day see you're the word made flesh your flesh is the word of the day the theophany is not the word of the day your flesh is the word of the day and when you can move into that understanding, then you're able to acclimate to what's going on in you and not something that happened 15,000 years ago. So Plato says when you get past those shadows that you set up, all those governments and lies, people will not understand you. Very few will believe you, but the masses never do. That's okay. It's our position to take the earth further. When we are in the unknown areas of our mind, this is my comment, many times we set up government within us trying to take form and shape and image of identity for ourselves. I'm a Baptist. That's why I believe in grace. I'm a Methodist. That's why I believe in, in good works. I'm a Pentecostal. That's why I speak in tongues every time I go to church. I'm a whatever it might be. We set up shadow governments. And then I call that a shadow government. Trying to set up an image and an identity. Trying to set things up on a word or a prophecy or a vision. When none of it has happened yet or it's a day gone by. Then when the true identity begins to emerge, the true word, the true flesh raising up with that day and that life within it, when that flesh begins to raise up in men and women, rains itself down out of the heavens and becomes flesh and walks around, then when the true identity begins to emerge from the actual experience it is hard for a person to walk away from the shadow government, to detach yourself and take on the form of reality, the form that you found in your experience. That's reality. If you've got something set up that you haven't experienced, it's like I told one fellow, he said, uh, he said uh, I think you need to go back and read Thessalonians 4 and 15, and I think you need to go back and read Corinthians 15, and you need to find out what the rapture really is. I'm waiting on the rapture. I wrote him back and I said, what? You telling me to go back and read Corinthians 15 and Thessalonians 4 and you haven't even had that happen to you yet? You haven't had a rapture yet? 
You tell me you're waiting on the rapture, and then you're going to you're going to discipline me and admonish me over what I think the rapture is. Well, I will tell you this one thing: I know what the rapture is. It has happened to me. And why would me or anyone else listen to you when you're just putting a theory out there? Of what you think you believe written down in some word somewhere but people do it all the time no matter how isolated you are and how lonely you feel if you love and do your work truly and consciously conscientiously unknown friends will come and seek you see if you do something with a desire seeking something seeking for the shadow governments to be removed seeking for reality to sit in seeking for flesh to raise up and present the word the way it's really supposed to be by experience unknown friends will come friends you didn't even know you had because they're seeking the same thing mm -hmm. they're seeking the same thing and what you seek is seeking you mm -hmm. It's longing for you just as much. It takes courage to endure the sharp pains of self-discovery rather than to choose to take the dull pain of unconsciousness that would last for the rest of our lives. A lot of us want to do that. I take the dull pain of unconsciousness and sit around and let it last the rest of my life and not have to worry about all of these things that has to do with self-discovery that has to do with Mount Sunrise moving through thick veils moving into the third coming laying down second coming it would be much easier to just sit around and you know tell them yeah have at it and go over there in the corner and pray and hope the Holy Spirit jumps up and down on you you know whatever you that's that's the old style that's all all of those things at one time they were true but they are not what the spirit is doing today losing an illusion in your life makes a wiser person than finding a truth we need to lose the illusions in our life shadow governments are illusions that you set up thinking it would make you better. And you know what makes you set those up when you set them up? Your theophany. Mm -hmm. That theophany is looking for a way to make it better for him in the earth. And when you use your theophany to set up these shadow governments without just accepting what's going on and letting those experiences acclimate you to the word of the hour, mm -hmm. the real flesh, mm -hmm. by experience, you've got an illusion set up. And I don't care how many truths you try to find, it'll never make you as wise as laying that illusion down. Bruce Lee, he said, absorb what is useful, discard what is useless, and add what is specifically your own. Did you understand that? Yeah. I like it. Absorb what is useful, discard what is useless absorb the reality of experience a reality government and discard what is useless your shadow governments that do you no good and add what is specifically your own look at your experience and say this is what the Lord this is what I'm doing in me I wrote this to one brother. When love vacates, hell's all that's left. <laughs> he was talking about heaven and hell. You can live in either one. I said, when love vacates, hell is all that's left. When you can't leave a shadow government and love moves on, because it will, mm -hmm. hell is all that's left. Mm -hmm. That's what you'll be living in. No matter how isolated you are and how lonely you feel. I wrote a comment on that. The universe doesn't respond to words or language. 
Do your work and do it with love. Everything you do, do it with love. The universe doesn't respond to words or language. The universe responds to vibes, vibration. Vibes throughout the frequencies. We are the vibrations and frequencies and what you seek is seeking you. Continue to love and enjoy your work and your culture. Your tribe will appear. Yes. You are not alone in the unknown. What time is it getting to be? Uh, 11.20. Okay. Good. Good I want to... <laughs> <laughs> I want to go through a little shadow government in our time. Kind of help you. Benjamin, Benjamin Netanyahu, leader of Israel. He entered the Knesset, the cabinet of Israel. Started his ministry in September 27, 1967. Israel. Benjamin Netanyahu. September 27, 1967. Dom Parnell, at 13 years old, entered his ministry into the message of William Branham and into spiritual Israel across the earth, September the 27th, 1967. Two governments being set up in the earth. Benjamin Netanyahu moved out of that old one and moved into another party and set up another government and moved Israel into a whole new day and moved them out of their old ways and set them up in a much greater government in a much greater way and led them through to a transition into a new day in 2004 go back and read it for yourself and Don Parnell stepped out of the message stepped out of William Branham's day stepped out of all those things in 2004 and brought on a new message, brought on a new day, brought on 2002, brought the vision, 2004 brought the pen, and 2000, all those things were happening 2004, 5, and 6, just like Benjamin Netanyahu was doing. What's going on? Shadow governments mm -hmm. that were going on. And now don't run out here and say, wow, Don Parnell is the great government and Benjamin Netanyahu is a shadow government. No, they're both shadow governments. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at this. Dom Parnell is going to the Branham Tabernacle from the time of his birth, 1954, up until William Branham passed away in 1965. I was there. I was almost 12 years old. I was 11 years and, uh, and 10 months old. William Branham passed away. At the same time, Joseph Branham was born. Don Parnell steps out with a ministry, a spiritual ministry, a spiritual understanding with the spirit of Joseph, a double portion upon him. Joseph Branham steps out with the same spirit upon him, and he takes the word, he takes a brand new day, he takes over the voice of God, he takes over everything, and he takes the word that's in the storehouses of the Joseph ministry and spreads it all over the earth. And at the same time, here's another ministry right under William Branham's wings, grows up in the tabernacle, comes out, and takes this new ministry and begins to spread it throughout the whole earth. Yeah, Joseph Branham's a shadow government. Don Part no, we're both shadow governments. Don't run out there and try to make something out of it other than this right here. Shadow governments are going on all the time the ministry behind them is real. Those books going into those nations for those people that have never heard what we have said, it's good for them. It's real for them. Mm -hmm. And Joseph is doing a real ministry for them. Mm -hmm. And these things that are going in across the world everywhere, these new ministry and a new day and a brand new love divine is real and it's good and it's good for us. And all of it is transitioning the people forward in their days mm -hmm. and in the in whatever they are in. Take a look at Donald Trump. I said all along, he was a type of me. He would go into office, he, the, the nation would be blessed, Israel and the United States would come to a great blessing, 
and I have said for probably at least a thousand years now, Israel and the United States and their governments will influence all the other governments across the earth as we watch them topple, as we watch communism topple, as we watch all these things happen. And Donald Trump stepped in, who who was <laughs> Corinthians 15, the last Trump. A trumpet comes in and begins to sound out, and at the same time, here comes a trumpet blowing 2015, blowing a brand new day and a brand new message and a brand new way. And here comes a guy in 2016 saying this is the way we're going to do it and blows his trumpet in the political scene. The Pope blows his trumpet in the religious scene. A Tory blows his trumpet in, in the spiritual scene. And Joseph blows his trumpet in the natural scene. Brother Branham says, my son Joseph said he's got a double portion on him. Prophesize over him. Do you think that just meant that one shadow government? Every one of these shadow governments have a double portion on them. He said that he can take a, a, a 22 rifle. How many knows what the number 22 is? It's 22 collective nerves to the mind. It's the mind of Christ. Joseph can take the mind of Christ. I can shoot a nail in a tree at 25 yards, but Joseph can shoot it at 50 yards. Double portion of what I have. And what's 50? 50 is the Jubilee. Joseph, these shadow governments moving out into the earth, the Joseph ministry under us, the Joseph ministry under Joseph Branham, the Joseph ministry under Donald Trump, the Joseph ministry under Benjamin Netanyahu. We're watching shadow governments all over the world that are coming forth and prospering and bringing great things into the earth and influencing the earth all over the place. Shadow governments, including me. If you try to look at me as the one head of this or that, you're looking at it all wrong. We're all shadow governments and there is a ministry in us that is moving the reality and the experience of these governments. Mm -hmm. Just like there's a Congress, there is the Senate, and there is the House, and there's the Executive Branch, and there's the Judicial Courts, and then you come over and there's all of these things that are set up in Israel, and all these things that are, you, you just go on and on and on. It's, and who's, who's making these things work? The people. The government is just a shadow government set up and when it's time to move on, I'm not going to stick around in some shadow government. It's going to move more. There's going to be greater things happen. Brother Joseph Branham has his place in the ministry. Born natural son of the prophet William Branham. Operating the voice of God from a natural building in Charlestown, Indiana. Manufacturing the word through natural means of books, DVDs, CDs while filling up the natural storehouses of his ministry across the world. He is the physical manifestation of the Joseph ministry in the earth today. And then there's the move of the spirituality in the earth. The Joseph ministry, also prophesied by his father, William Branham, works as faith expressed. He said, Joseph is coming. And he said, my sons, go read it for yourself. He didn't say my son, Joseph. He said, my sons, S-O-N-S, -S, Joseph. All of us are spreading this thing throughout the world. My son, works as faith expressed. If you don't believe me, go read it for yourself. I'm not your reader. William Brenham, the spiritual ministry, has continued to move on to open up great avenues of the world ministry, fulfilling the prophecies, visions, and words that were given in the centuries gone by. And in William Brenham's personal ministry, we thank the Lord for Joseph as he fulfills the word with books, DVDs, and CDs. And we thank the Lord for the spirit that Joseph ministry across the world that is carrying on the revelation of Jesus Christ. Men like Alario Saldana, websites, putting these things out left and right, setting up live broadcasts with us, doing these things and it going out all over the place. People like Joseph uh, Gomez, the, the ladies that are putting out all these posters and everything that people can use them all over the place. 
Sister Shiro and Sister Choni and Sister, all these people that are doing all of these things and it's spreading out all over the place. The three forums, the forums, the forum that Brother Larryo and I set up and then the other forums that Brother Taoni has set up and all the different ones. There are many more forums than three. It's going out to hundreds of thousands of people everywhere. It's a ministry, a Joseph ministry, and it's set up and it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's carrying on the revelation of love divine. Those other shadow governments are doing what they're supposed to do. It's pulling Israel and the United States together to set up an influence across the earth and bring on new governments. It's pulling the, the uh, message together in such a way that people have a platform that they can move on to this. If they didn't have a platform to move on from, it would be rough. So all of it is platforms. I've been a beneficiary of both wings of this great eagle. I got to sit under the religious side. I got to sit under the physical side. And I'm sitting under the spiritual side. It's a great blessing. Shadow governments, let's move beyond them. Let's realize Don Parnell's not doing this. He's a shadow of good things. And the good things are you. Look at what come. First fruits are shadows of a good thing to come. We were first fruits. William Branham, me, Joseph, Benjamin Netanyahu, Donald Trump. But you don't want to feel the first fruits. <laughs> That's not going to do you any good. You want to move beyond the shadow. You want to come to the, the field. You want to come to the harvest. You want to come to the, the beauty of it all. You want to come to what, what it's all about. And you want to come to where the people are the experience and are the real true reality government in the earth today. It's been humbling knowing the move and the flow of Christ in this day and watching all of these governments I've been watching them for quite some time now. Kind of staying quiet because I know how people feel about some things. But I'm not going to stay quiet anymore. It's time to level the playing field. Get through your veils. Get through the men you thought were so great and realize that you have the same thing in you. Get through the veils that you thought were so wonderful. Get through the books that you thought were so good. Get through the DVDs and the CDs and get through all those things and, and come to your experience, your day, and what's happening with you. Therein is your shadow governments. And the spirituality of a true government coming on the scene. You're the true government. You up there that are watching me. You on these websites. You that are going to watch afterwards. You that are going to play these on Facebook. You are the true government. You are the experience. I've never tried to make myself anything. Someone writes and says, are you a prophet? I say, that's a decision you got to make. I don't claim myself to be anything. Someone writes and says, a Tori Aloyance is the new name. I never said it was. I took the name of Tori Aloyance because I knew the name Don Parnell was finished. Donald Kennard Parnell was a chief. That's what the name means. Parnell is a stone. And that is all about the church ages and the transformation and the transition. And all that's over and we're in a new day. And the Holy Spirit began to deal with me in my heart, my very being said, that's not your name anymore. Your name is a Tori Aloyansa, a peaceful warrior being led and guided by the Spirit. That's what I want to be. And I just, I took that. Every one of you, be the same. Be who you are. Understand who you are. Stop pushing a man. Stop pushing Jesus. <laughs> that just kills people, I know. Stop pushing Paul. Stop pushing William Branham. Stop pushing Dom Parnell. Stop pushing a Tory. Stop pushing your pastor. Stop pushing your prophets. Stop pushing all these things and pull together and be one. If you want a group under a ministry in your area, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. 
But stop trying to make that the only true ministry and we're it and there's nobody else. I want you to know there's many, many more than you. And when you start thinking your local area is it, you got a pretty small mind. Level the playing field. That's what this is about. I'm done. <laughs> Anybody have anything you I want have to say? I a lot, but I'm going to wait till Friday. <laughs> if I start, I won't stop, so I'll wait till Friday. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot in that. And, and I'll give you a hint of what I'm thinking. Take Genesis 1 and move it past Genesis 2 where Adam's, the spirit of Adam stepped into the flesh and put flesh, stepped into earth and put flesh around him. That's where Genesis 1 started. That's, That's right. where the God that created the heaven condition for mm -hmm. contrast and the earth for that contrast to live out there in Genesis 2. Mm -hmm. Move Genesis 1 to Genesis 2 and you get the understanding of Genesis 1. That's right. You get the understanding of God. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'll stop right there. <laughs> Genesis 1, the shadow government. Exactly. Genesis 2, the reality. Reality, yes. yes. Stick yes. with the light. Stick yes. with the reality. You are the light. You are the reality. And let the shadow pass. Amen. And don't Still. live on what you've done. And don't live on your shadow. Live on constantly in the light. Live in the light. And I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Probably way up to the fried noodles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Leveling the playing field. These next several sessions, Friday and Sunday, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be leveling the playing field. You remember I said that at the end of the year. I said we're going to move into leveling the playing field. Go ahead, Brother Al. I'm trying to remember if it's on the court path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Clean, yes. I don't remember the chorus. Sister Pam, she'll find it. Make worthy. 
nothing too dirty that you can't make worthy you washed me in mercy and I am clean help the people through that veil that's your commission we thank you for everything that you've done for us today we declare in the Christ that we are and in the authority that we have that all these things be done, that the sick be healed, the lame walk, finances taken care of, all things that we decide and all things that we need are ours this day, as the prophecy has said. And we trust it. In Christ's name, amen. Amen.